Ralph Bear here. Hi, I'm the stupid superhero. And I'll be your nitpicker for this evening. As you can see from the title of this video and that jump scare, no apologies needed really. We're reviewing creepypastas. What is creepypasta, you may ask? Says like, I don't know, at least like, um, to you for the audience. Hi, Ralph. Oh, hey. <laughs> you? Well, if you expect anything like a giant spaghetti monster, then that'll be like a super sweet and totally awesome monster movie. Please make it. Creepypastas are scary stories on the internet with quality ranges from just well done to just downright <laughs> laughable. The name is based off of copypastas, where you copy and paste a story text from an unknown author and spread a story around the internet, or even do dramatic narrations of it on YouTube. The stories can range from simple ghost stories to complete mind-fuckery scary shit and things him way too close to home. Well, with variety like that, we the unfortunate audience will ought to be terrified, indifferent, or find it laughable depending on the quality. The green pasta stories generated many characters from Slenderman, Jeff the Killer, and... <laughs> huh? What? You serious? <laughs> okay, then I laugh louder. <laughs> Creepypastas usually contains many traits in their stories, from the lack of disclaimers by the author of the story that blends the lines of reality and fantasy <laughs> that are usually told in a first person perspective, and transformation of things that are meant to be wholesome to <laughs> something more perverse. Then again, the show is creepy even without the pasta. <laughs> Just saying. And last but not least, the fear of the unknown. Like, Cthulhu levels of the unknown. Somebody get me the Ghostbusters. <laughs> and you wanna know which creep pasta narrator is on my top 5 personal favorites? And my top 5 personal favorite stories? Now let's begin with a review of the story, Eyeless Jack, a story debuting the titular character that was birthed during the unnecessarily successful <laughs> Jeff the Killer, <laughs> thus creating the age of why I like to dub killer exploitation, where everybody and their grandmother's last name is usually called <laughs> the killer, and the story usually has some kind of unnecessarily brutal origin story on how these guys came to be. But Eyeless Jack first sprang to mind as my first Creepypasta review due to his concept and his image being something a lot more interesting to me in mind. Too bad the actual story ran by AzF5000 could have been done so much better with the potential it had. Let's begin the story told by the underrated and awesome Pasta Master. Hello. My name is Mitch. I'm here to tell you guys about an experience I had. I don't know if it was paranormal, or whatever stupid words people use to describe supernatural phenomena, but after that thing visited me, I believe in the paranormal now. Kinda contradicted yourself there, don't you, Pally? With Mitch saying that people believing in ghosties are just plain silly. And the fact that he now believe in this paranormal trash, he sounded quite uncomfortable to admit it. Maybe just a little bitter about it. Also, I never get the whole, hello, my name is blank, in almost every introduction of these kinds of stories, to be honest. Might wanna change it up a little, guys, with a more gripping opening one-liner or something? I get that these stories are meant for creating a sense of believability for the readers and to even relate to the characters, even if his personality is very much in the <laughs> self-insert category, with the next events of the story will have him doing things that we know damn well won't even do. But since it's THE INTERNET, we had to write like a blog or even a found footage vlog to create some big views on YouTube. <laughs> it's popular because
because someone died. <laughs> Jesus. I suggest that some stories could be just told in a more of a novel. You know, pre-internet type stuff. Which more recent green bosses pull off in flying freaking colors. Just read any one of Vincent B. works as a great example of keeping things fresh, interesting, terrifying, and downright entertaining. A week after I moved in with my brother Edwin, after my house was foreclosed, I finished unpacking. Edwin liked the idea of me moving in, since we had not seen each other in over ten years. So I was excited too. I fell asleep after I moved in. After that one week, I heard rustling noises coming from outside at about one in the morning. I thought it was a raccoon, so I ignored it and tried to fall asleep. The next morning, I told Edwin about it and he agreed. Alright, slow down there for a moment. We got like a small bit of backstory from Mitch and his brother. I mean, is there a falling out between those two for the past 10 years? Any details on the foreclosing of his house or any other form of character establishment? I know it was a short story we need to get a move on here, but it's moving way too fast to build on character introduction, establishment, or any slow build up to, oh, I don't know, all that scary shit. I mean, from that paragraph, we went from here to there at like a hundred miles per hour. Look, we don't want no Nolan-esque or Ian Fleming levels of painstaking details and storytelling here. We want to know just enough info and pacing to get us, as readers, more comfortable so we can ease right into the world of the short story. Hell, it could have been more endearing. Not that I care. The next night, however, I thought I heard my window opening with a loud thump, as if something entered my room. I darted up and looked around the room. I saw nothing. The next morning... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Back the fuck up! You're telling me that you just heard a loud thump and you got up but instead of just checking it out, whatever, you went all, eh, fuck it, and went back to sleep? <laughs> Yo, Mitch, I got a reward for you. No, Mr. Hand, not my own award! Anything but that! <laughs> Edwin dropped his coffee cup when he saw me. He held up a nearby mirror, and I saw myself. I had a large gash in my left cheek. After I was rushed to the hospital, my doctor told me that I must have been sleepwalking. But then he showed me something that made my blood run cold. He lifted up my shirt to reveal a sewn-up incision where my kidneys were. I stared into his eyes, my eyes widening. You somehow lost your left kidney last night. We don't know how, though. Sorry, Mitch, my doctor told me. Oh no, there's more! Apparently not only your common sense has been thrown out the freaking window, but also you didn't feel a damn thing last night from your face and damn kidney? Okay, I want the whole not getting up from a loud noise slide since it comes from the most lazy of us, but being cut up in your sleep is gonna hurt like a mug, man. Actually, I'm more amazed how nonchalant Dr. Give a Shits over here is taking all this. Yo, man, hate to get you straight, but, uh, your kid has been stolen, but, hey, one kidney's better than none. <laughs> Am I right? Am I? Okay, I'm not right. All right, we're done here. You can go home now. So you're not gonna do something with my goddamn kidney? Ah, don't worry about it, kiddo. Here's a sucker. I don't think it's worth a sucker. Moving on. The next night was my breaking point. Around midnight. I woke up to see a truly horrifying sight. I was staring in the face of a creature with a black hoodie and a dark blue mask with no nose or mouth staring down at me. The thing that scared me the most is that it had no eyes, just empty black sockets. The creature also had some black substance dripping from its sockets. I grabbed a nearby camera on the mantle and took a picture. After the picture was taken, the creature lunged at me and tried to claw open my chest to get at my lungs. I stopped it by kicking it in the face. 
As I ran out of the room, I grabbed my wallet. I would need the money. I ran out of my brother's house into the night. I eventually ended up in the woods near Edwin's house and tripped on a rock. While I do find Jack's design based on this image interesting, being simple and effective in the creepy department, and more unique out of all the intentionally stylized The Killer characters. He has a very unknown and human looking appearance with an all black, almost shapeless body with a blue face um, mask being the only thing that stands out. Like something out of the Seven Seal or those guys from Spirited Away, only minds the eyes, nose, and mouth. But sadly, that actual cool look on Alice Jack has been replaced in later fan works with a black hoodie, pants, and having a more human design, including with him having brown hair. Resulting Jack to look like your umpteenth hoodie profiling emo kids from the killers category. Hmm, I kind of wonder one thing. How does he eat kidneys without a mouth? Does it go poof and bam, he's full? Or his hands got a freaky face on it and then it eats like Vampire Hunter D. If he did that, then that would be so awesome. Huh, that's like the third MLP related thing that we did on the show. I wonder if it's going to be a trend. Anyway, design flaws aside, when it comes to his eating habits, Jack's original design is still something to be appreciated. Still doesn't excuse Mitch for just fucking bailing out on his damn brother while running out of the damn house. But, he still managed to have enough precious time to get his precious friggin' wallet. Brother of the year, ladies and gentlemen. Save yourselves! I fell unconscious and awoke in the hospital. My doctor entered the room the same one who treated me before. I have good news and bad news, Mitch, and my doctor started. The good news is that you have minor injuries, and your parents are going to pick you up. I sighed with relief. The bad news is that your brother has been killed by some... thing. I'm sorry. Doctor give a shit. He gives not one, but two. And no biggie, Mitch. <laughs> you can laugh about all this with your loving dear brother. Oh, yeah, shit. Hmm. My parents took me back to Edwin's house to collect my remaining belongings, which I did. Upon entering my room, I was scared, but remained calm. I grabbed my camera and stopped dead in my tracks. In the hallway leading to my room, I saw Edwin's body still there, and something laying next to it. I picked up the small thing and entered my parents' car, not mentioning Edwin's corpse. I looked at the thing I had picked up and nearly vomited. I was holding my stolen, half-eaten kidney with some black substance on it. Wait a minute. You're just gonna go back to a house? No, wait. A crime scene where the cops kind of go all... Um... Hey, uh, should we stop him? Nah, it's cool, he's going to get his thanks. Alright, but do you realize that we forget to pick up the body, right? He's gonna freak out, you know. Nah, he seems to be a tough kid, he can take it. Ah! Well? No worries, man. It's gonna be hilarious later on. He'll just laugh. And where the hell is the media? With something like a murder happening, it would have been all over that. I mean, Jeff the Killer, as bad as that story is, at least bothered to show the character up on the news. I mean, why not Jack? And Mitch Fox stupidity is his horrible delayed reaction. We just pick up some random thing from a crime scene without <laughs> looking and just now realize he was holding his own damn half eaten kidney. Why did Jack just ate some portions and just leave it? Is he some sort of a fox? Maybe he's on a diet. Ever thought of that, Mr. Ann? Huh? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna totally grind that shit. As you can tell, this story wasn't good at all. Like I said before, I was jacked from that image and parts of the idea that he's this unknown thing from the likes of the rake, for example, breaks into innocent people's homes and harms them. And the concept of a skeptic not believing in the paranormal, only to have terrifying legit first encounters with one, while done before, can be executed well with better writing. From dumbass unrealistic character reactions and behaviors and situations, especially a very selfish move from Mitch himself, to absurdly fast pacing and the non-consistent aspect of Jack really rules what could have been a good scary story. What we learned from that guy is that a picture is worth a thousand words. That's surprisingly on the nose there, stupid. Huh. 
Does a menu worth a thousand Big Macs? I don't know, because I'm dying for some brain food. Goodbye, character development. <laughs> but if you want to hear a good Alice Jack story, check out Matt Macabar's simple but scary dramatic narrations of my Alice Jack experience. Right here on the link below. Also, check out Pasta Master's YouTube channel. That guy can know how to cook us up a really spooky, scary story. Well, what are you waiting for? Buzz off. Review's over. Nice concept, but could have been much, much worse. Still crap if you ask me. Is it normal to live with two of your kidneys missing? 